We're going to find the rational roots of 2x to the third minus 5x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. Well, first you need to find the possible rational roots. And the possible rational roots are found by taking factors of the constant term, factors of negative 1, and putting those over factors of the leading coefficient, factors of 2. So factors of the constant term, factors of negative 1, would be positive negative 1. And factors of the leading coefficient, factors of 2, would be positive negative 1 and positive negative 2. So the possible rational roots are found by taking each of those constant factors and putting those over each of those leading coefficient factors. So if you take positive negative 1 and put it over positive negative 1, that would be positive negative 1. And positive negative 1 over positive negative 2, that would be positive negative 1 half. So those are the possible rational roots. Now you need to try those, substitute those in, and hopefully you get one to work. Hopefully you get one that is a root. And that will be a key that unlocks the door to finding all the other roots. So we'll start with something easy. We'll start with 1. Substitute 1 in for x. So if you substitute 1 in for x, you end up with 2 minus 5 plus 1 minus 1. That's not equal to 0. So 1 is not a root. You need to try something else. Let's stay positive and try 1 half. If you substitute 1 half in for x, you end up with 1 fourth minus 5 fourths plus 1 half minus 1. That's not equal to 0. So 1 half is not a root. You need to try something else. Let's try negative 1. So if you substitute negative 1 in for x, you end up with negative 2 minus 5 minus 1 minus 1. That's not equal to 0. So 3 out of the 4 possible rational roots are not roots. So you need to try the last one. Just because 3 out of the 4 didn't work doesn't mean the last one will. So if you try that last one, negative 1 half, if you substitute negative 1 half in for x, you end up with negative 1 fourth minus 5 fourths minus 1 half minus 1. That is not equal to 0. So 4 out of the 4, all 4 possible rational roots are not roots. So what does that mean? Well, it still has 3 roots. Based on that degree, the degree of 3 still has 3 roots. And if you look at the graph, you can see it does hit the x-axis. It's hitting the x-axis at an irrational root. So where it's hitting in the x-axis, that is an irrational number. And you might say, well, where are the other two roots? The other two roots would be complex roots. So to answer this, there are no rational roots. The degree of a polynomial tells you how many roots the equation has. It's easy to see graphically by looking at the graph that every polynomial function of degree 1, every linear function, has a single zero where it hits the x-axis, the x-intercept. However, there appear to be three possibilities for polynomials of degree 2. In other words, quadratics. They correspond to these graphs that you'll see. First one is y equals x squared minus 4. So you can see that the graph of that hits the x-axis in two places. There are two real zeros. Next, y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, if you look at that, it appears the graph is only hitting in one place. There is one real zero. And finally, y equals x squared plus 2x plus 2. That is the graph of that. You can see that that graph is not hitting the x-axis. There are no real zeros. Now, take this a little bit further. If you factor those, you can get a better look at the solutions. So we'll start with that y equals x squared minus 4. If you set x squared minus 4 equal to 0, that is a difference of two squares. That factors into x plus 2 times x minus 2. So since those two multiply together to equal 0, you could set each one equal to 0, and you get x equals negative 2, and positive 2. So there are two roots, two real zeros, two solutions. This y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. If you factor that, the x squared minus 2x plus 1 factors into x minus 1 times x minus 1. Those two multiply together at equal 0, and if you set each one equal to 0, you end up with x equals 1. Now that has a root of multiplicity 2. In other words, the 1 will show up twice in the list of solutions. So there are still two zeros. And finally, y equals x squared plus 2x plus 2. It's a little bit complicated to factor this. It factors into x minus the negative of 1 plus i times x minus the negative of 1 minus i. And if you set each one of those equal to 0, set x minus the negative of 1 plus i equal to 0, and x minus the negative 1 minus i equal to 0. And solve those for x, you end up with x equals negative 1 plus i, and x equals negative 1 minus i. So those are two imaginary solutions. Now it still has two solutions. So the degree will not lie. The degree of the polynomial will tell you how many solutions you'll get. Whether it's two complex roots or two imaginary solutions. Whether the multiplicity is two where you have a solution that shows up twice. Or whether you have two real solutions. The degree of the polynomial will tell you how many solutions you'll get. 
Every quadratic polynomial equation has two roots. The degree is two. You're going to get two roots. They may be complex roots. They may be roots with a multiplicity of two, or they may be two real solutions, but you're going to get two roots if the degree is two. Every cubic polynomial equation has three roots. The degree is three. You're going to get three roots. The fundamental theorem of algebra states that if p of x is a polynomial where the degree is greater than or equal to 1, so n is the degree, it's greater than or equal to 1, then p of x equals 0 has exactly n roots. In other words, it will have exactly the number of roots that the degree is. So if it's a quadratic where the degree is 2, you'll have two roots. If it's a cubic polynomial where the degree is 3, you'll have three roots. If it's to the fourth degree, you'll have four roots and so on. This includes multiple and complex roots. So you may have complex roots or imaginary solutions, you may have multiplicities, or you may have real solutions. But the degree will tell you exactly how many solutions or roots you will get. We're going to find all the roots of x to the fifth minus x to the fourth minus 3x to the third plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. So by finding all the roots, that means you're going to find all five roots. The degree is 5, you should be getting five roots. So first you need to find the possible rational roots. And the possible rational roots are found by taking factors of the constant term, factors of 4, and putting those over factors of leading coefficient, factors of 1. Now think about that. If you're taking factors of 4 and putting those over factors of 1, it's just going to be those factors of 4 because putting those over factors of 1 isn't going to change anything. So factors of 4 would be positive or negative 1, positive or negative 2, and positive or negative 4. Now if you put those over factors of 1, it's just going to be that list again. So those are the possible rational roots. Now you need to try those in, substitute those in, and see if you get one to work. Start with something easy. Start with one. So if you substitute one in for x, replace each x with a one. If you substitute one in for x, you end up with one minus one minus three plus three minus four plus four. That is going to be equal to zero. So that means that one is a root. And since one is a root, think of synthetic division, synthetic substitution that we've done before. Since 1 is a root, that means x minus 1 is a factor. So if you take that factor, if you divide this polynomial by that factor, you'll get another factor. So we're going to use synthetic division and divide that polynomial by that factor of x minus 1, and we will get another factor. So to use synthetic division, list the coefficients. 1, negative 1, negative 3, 3, negative 4, and 4. Those are the coefficients, and you're dividing by x minus 1, so put a positive one in the box for synthetic division. Now proceed with synthetic division. Bring down that first coefficient. Bring down the one. Go back to the box and multiply one by one. That is one. Then add negative one and one. That's going to be zero. Go back to the box. Multiply one by zero. That is zero. Add negative three and zero. That's going to be negative three. Back to the box. Multiply one by negative three. That is negative three. Then add three and negative three. You get zero. Back to the box and multiply one by zero. That is zero. Then add negative four and zero. You get negative four. And again, go back to the box, multiply 1 by negative 4, that is negative 4. Now you're dividing by one of its factors, so you know the remainder is going to be 0. So add 4, negative 4, that is 0. Now these are the coefficients of the other factor. Be careful counting backwards. 0 is the remainder, negative 4 is the constant term, 0 is the coefficient on the x, negative 3 is the coefficient on the x squared, 0 is the coefficient on the x to the third, we don't need those zeros, and 1 is the coefficient on the x to the fourth. So that is another factor, x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4. So we have two factors now, x minus 1 and this x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4. But this, x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4, will likely factor further. So we're going to factor that x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4 into two binomials. The first terms of those two binomials will be x squared. So x squared and x squared are the first terms. The second terms will multiply to get negative 4 and add to get negative 3. So those second terms would be negative 4 and 1. So now we have three factors. x minus 1, x squared minus 4, and x squared plus 1. But those two quadratic factors, those may still factor further. That x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares. And that x squared plus 1 is a sum of two squares. Each of those will factor. The x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares. That factors into x plus 2 times x minus 2. And x squared plus 1, that is a sum of two squares. That factors into x plus i times x minus i. Just like if it was x squared minus 1, if it was a difference of two squares, it factored into x plus 1 and x minus 1. Well, since it's a sum of two squares, that factors into x plus i times x minus i. 
So now we have one, two, three, four, five factors, and those are all linear factors. So, and those all multiply together, it equals zero. So if they all multiply together, it equals zero, that means we can set each one equal to zero. If you set x minus one equal to zero and solve for x, you get x equals one. If you set x plus two equal to zero and solve for x, you get x equals negative two. Set x minus two equal to zero, get x equals two. If you set x plus i equal to zero, get x equals negative i. And set x minus i equal to zero, get x equals positive i. So we were looking for all five roots. There they are. The five roots are one, negative two, two, negative i, and i. Two of those are imaginary roots, and three of those are real roots or real solutions. So two imaginary solutions, three real solutions. Those are the five roots.